This does uh, not look like a regular ultralight. You've got a few uh, changes to this over uh, what I've seen in uh, in the past out in the field here. Well, I'm I'm an old crop duster, you know, and we found out years ago uh, the world of agricultural aviation for the last 50 years have uh, done studies on what's the safest airplane in the world you can crash. Well, it turns out it's a Pro Molly fuselage biplane configuration. It's a Pro Molly crushes up protection. Biplane configuration gives you the rollover protection. Well, when I went to, and I'm alive today because of Pro Molly steel, I sucked a bird up in the air and take coming over some trees one time. But the, uh, so when I decided I was going to build an airplane, you know, I looked at some pop aluminum stuff and I just decided I. I'll stick with the chromoly steel. Chromoly steel fuselage is maybe three or four pounds heavier than aluminum fuselage, and a lot less work. You don't have all that drilling and stuff. Plus, the other thing is, is the amount of landings that you do with a pop rivet aluminum tube fuselage. You get all that shock in there, and pretty soon those little rivet holes start to develop fatigue cracks in it. And the chromoly steel doesn't. Now we got an all aluminum wing in here. You see, every one of those fittings is a hinge fitting. So, you know, when you land and everything, it's, you don't get the stress on the, the wing tubes like you would on the fuselage. Anyway, with all that in mind, we uh, build a pretty pretty heavy fuselage. That's, if you look at the Pro Molly tube in there, you'll see it's the same size as on a, a Super Cub. And uh, we have one guy crashed one so far. He stuffed it straight in for 400 feet. I mean, straight in, vertical. And he's walking around and living today, didn't have a helmet on, didn't have a shoulder harness on. But the FAA said it was due to the, the fuselage and trajectory, and it's all, you know, scrunched up and, and uh, saved him. He came out from New Hampshire and shook my hand and said, thank you. <laughs> you know, but I, we don't like to test them that way, but it, it is, does what we want it to do. Now, you're not flying on a two-stroke engine on this either. No, but for the first um, 470 or 80 hours, it had two strokes in it. We put a 503 Rotax in it originally. Couldn't find a four-stroke that would work right, you know, the right, the right weight, the right power, and everything fit. And so we put a uh, Rotax 503 in it. The only four-stroke that I could find, I designed the airplane for what they call an Mdare 60, a little four-cylinder, flat opposed, fits in a 24-inch area. And they were supposed to bring it into the country from Italy for 2,500 bucks. Got here it was 3,500. A month later it was 4,500. Today it's 9,000 if you can find it, you know. So. Anyway, uh, we never were able to find a four-stroke engine, so we thought ah, we'll put the 503 in it until we can find one. Well, we spent 350 hours with the 503, two trips out here to Oshkosh and back, and, and it worked just fine. I never have a problem with it. You know, it burns a little more fuel and stuff. Beep. Runs kind of noisy, you know. But other than that, it was a good engine. Then we went to an AMW engine, which was a real nicely built engine, a two-stroke also, but it's semi-custom, you know, and uh, we were concerned about parts availability and things. And then finally we came up with a geo engine, we spent the last year and a half getting it all sorted out. And, uh, you know, the gearbox, it uses a Ross Aero gear drum box. That we had them designed specific for this engine. It fits exactly the geo metro engine. The whole gearbox weighs seven and a half pounds. They take your flywheel off the metro engine, the steel flywheel, Make an aluminum one, take the ring gear off of it, put it on there, it saves about four pounds. You only got a net gain of weight of about two and a half pounds in the whole engine with the gear drive on it. With the alternator, the starter, the manifolds, the whole thing's 135 pounds, about 60 horsepower. And what kind of um, a performance might you and then uh, say versus a 503? It's almost identical. It takes a, a few more feet, you know, eight or ten feet more maybe on takeoff because of the weight, uh, the weight. Uh, the power ratio. It's actually more power, but it's a little heavier engine, you know. And um, then uh, it's almost indistinguishable. You know, you almost have to figure out, you know, what's really the temperature today and that kind of thing. Uh, it's probably got a little higher cruise on it, and you know, the rate of power is about the same. So altogether, it's about the same, except 
with Rotax, if you're going to go a couple hours, uh, if you put a 582 or something like that in it, you can be burning four and a half to five gallons an hour, and you're probably going to be limited to a little under two hours. Where on this thing, you know, you can either go with less fuel, you know, if you're just a little local thing and you have uh, less weight, or you can uh, end up uh, going, like, say, three hours at two gallons an hour and still have. Uh, another gallon and a half for 45 minutes to, to fly on. Now this airplane, uh, are you uh, producing it as a kit or uh, did you buy it as uh, uh, plans? How did, how did no, I airplane... designed it, uh, just put out plans. Leading Edge Airfoils here in the States, uh, you know, puts out a kit for it. Uh, the, the ribs are pre-stamped, they're easy riser ribs and um, it's pretty basic materials, you know, tube spars. And, uh, those are Douglas fir 4x4s cut up into the struts and uh, it's, uh, like I say, it's pretty basic materials in there and pretty straightforward, uh, you know, construction techniques. It takes about 400 hours to build a, a Jenny. Once you got a little experience with it, you know, my wife and I have built them in 90 days and I was working full time at the time, so. But, uh, you know, you got to know how to gas weld or know somebody that does. They, Leaf actually is now offering a pre-welded fuselage for it and also pre built wing panels as far as that goes. Most guys that want to build this airplane want to build it uh, fairly reasonable. You can build the airframe, uh, the plans have a complete material list in them. You can go do your own shopping and stuff if you want, or you can buy the kit from Lee. But you should be able to build the airframe for about $4,500 and then whatever engine you put in. And it's designed then, as you mentioned, around the, the two strokes or even on the. No, I designed it all around a four stroke. Uh, but it, that engine just got too expensive. I designed it for a 130 pound engine. So. There's not a there's not an ounce of ballast in that airplane with that engine in it. It's 135 pounds. So I finally got the engine I wanted. <laughs> How many hours have you got on this one now? On the engine, I only got about 40 hours. On the airplane, I've got about five no uh, about uh, 480. The one next to me has got about 560 or something like that. We probably got, uh, yeah, between the two of us, we got over a thousand hours just on these two airplanes. There's about another 17 or 18 of them flying. There's 40 or more that I know of that are under construction. We've got over 400 sets of plans out. If you want more information, I guess uh, we get a hold of the people that are leading it? Yes, yes. They'll be able to fix you up, uh, you know, as far as materials and things like that. I always tell the builders, you know, you want to talk to me, call me anytime. I'd be glad to answer questions. We put out a construction video, you know, that mostly for people who never built before, you know, they can get the video and that way they can see how it's built, you know, it gives an overview, so they know what they're getting into and then they can decide whether they want to build the airplane. But uh, you can buy the plans or the construction video from Leading Edge. I make a little bit more money if you buy them directly from me and I'm glad to answer any questions. We do put out a newsletter, uh, a bi-monthly uh, for the airplane and uh, runs $15 a year. So if we want to get more information then on the newsletter and stuff, how do we get a hold of you? Uh, name, address, phone number, that type of thing? Well, it's uh, Dennis Wiley. I go by Early Bird Aircraft Company. And the uh, address is 125 Stearman Port. That's in Erie, Colorado in the uh, U.S. Zip code is 80516. And uh, telephone number is 303-665-5169 and we'll be able to fix you up. Thank you very much for your time. All right, we'll see you.